gente. Ready? everyone. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us. My name is Joe Monahan, and on behalf of the staff, the congregation here, we want to say thank you for joining us in worship. 
We want to say thank you uh, to those who are joining us online as well. It is good to be back after a week's vacation. I want to say thank you to everybody who uh, helped to cover last week. I'm really appreciative and I'm just really grateful uh, to everybody who was here and uh, everybody who helped in various ways. So thank you again for being with us today and uh, over the next two Sundays. We're going to be looking at stories that Jesus told about planting seeds and I'm looking forward to these couple of messages. It's kind of a little mini series is how I like to think about uh, some of these uh, lessons together. And if you're joining us in person today, we hope that you'll take a minute that you'll share, uh, that you'll check in on Facebook. If you're online with us today, I hope that you'll take a minute and share the stream. And uh, the ushers will come around in just a moment with the red attendance pads. We hope that you'll take a moment, let us know that you've been here. Uh, you can do the same thing if you're online with us today. Um, we hope that you'll uh, check in at medfordumc.org slash Sunday. There you can share your contact information. We do send out a weekly email with announcements and those types of things. So we hope that you'll give us the opportunity to do that. And uh, you'll also find at that medfordumc.org slash Sunday, you'll find connection to our social media. You'll be able to, uh, to submit a prayer request, uh, find the link for giving, all that kind of stuff. Good place to learn a little bit more about uh, what's going on here at the church. So we thank you for doing that. I was wondering where the microphone was, so that's great. <laughs> thank you. Um, so we want to remind you about a couple things today. First, I do want to encourage you to be in prayer uh, for our uh, Vacation Bible School. It's going to be starting tonight, and tonight we have uh, more than 50 kids uh, registered for the program, which we're really excited about. That's the best um, attendance that we've had or the best registration number that we've had uh, since the pandemic. So things are gradually coming back to normal, and we're really uh, looking forward to a great program tonight. I want to invite uh, Heidi Paul Hemus to come. Uh, she is the chair of our outreach team, uh, along with Danielle Adams, and uh, together they have been working on, with their team, a, a school supply drive, and so she'd like to share with you a little bit of a follow-up about uh, what's been going on with that. Um, I just wanted to share, you, share with you a little bit about our school supply drive this year. Uh, what we are doing is the outreach committee went ahead and bought the backpacks um, because we were able to get a good deal buying them in bulk instead of everybody go at, to go out and buy them individually. So what we need from the congregation is help getting the school supplies to fill them. And then they are going to go to students uh, in the area through several of our mission partners. And then they are going to give them out, um, some of them in homeless shelters or to other children that are in need um, for their school supplies. Um, so everything you need to know about our school supply drive is on these uh, handouts. And they can be found in the back corner over there. And there's a box for collecting the school supplies. You have a couple options on the best way to buy it. We have an Amazon wish list, and you can go either to the website or you can use our QR code, and it will bring you right to our wish list, and um, you can order from there. On the back of the handout, it says what things we're looking for if you would prefer to buy on your own. Um, you can also go through Push Pay and just do a donation toward um, the things that we need because some of the things we're going to go ahead and buy on our own and that would help to pay for the backpacks um, so thank you if you have any questions i will be back in the corner after the service and you can come talk to me so thank you very much so thank you heidi and thank all of you for your support of this project and again it's happening through august the 6th so thanks for your help well as we get ready to uh, begin worship, I'm going to invite you uh, to pray with me. We're going to put the uh, opening prayer up on the screen and uh, pray together. Let's pray. Oh God, we gather this morning in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your gospel truth fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and kind deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. Nate? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our time of worship. 
It's so good to be gathered together. I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able, and let's lift our voice together.
the rescue for sinners and the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. His body, the bread, and his blood, the wine. Children's time with Kelsey. Here we go. Hi, Will. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Here comes Sammy. Taking. Hi, Sammy. How are you today? Good. Good. All right. Oh, here comes Andrew. We'll see if anybody else wants to join us. And I'll say good morning to any kids that are listening online as well. Hi, Andrew. How are you? You and Will are kind of matching today with your teal green shirts. Hi, Christopher. Christopher, I love your glasses. I haven't seen you since you got glasses. They are so handsome. They look great. All right. So hi, everyone. How's summer going? Good? Good. I'm glad. So we're going to hear a story in a little bit. Um, called a parable. So and it's going to be a kind of about planting seeds and, and helping things grow. So if I wanted to plant something, what are some things that I need? What do I need, Will? Soil. Soil. What else do we need, Sammy? Water. Water. Very good. What, anything else, Andrew? Um, seeds. seeds, definitely. Anything else, Will? Sunlight. Sunlight. One more, Sammy? Yeah, definitely food for the plants, right? Hi, Aspen. How are you? Yeah, so we if I wanted to plant a garden, you're right. There's lots of different things that I would need. So I'd need the sunshine, the water, all those different kinds of seeds. So if I wanted to plant a sunflower seed, oop, I might drop my pea. If I wanted to plant a sunflower seeds, I might plant or plant a sunflower. I might take these seeds right here and put them in the ground and a sunflower would grow. Yes.
Well, I had to go through the bird seed and like find the sunflowers that were in there. Cause we, yeah, it's a whole thing. This is kind of cool. This is not a seed. It's a piece of paper that I, we got at something and it turns into a seed. So I might plant this and a plant would grow. If I wanted to grow a donut tree, I might plant these seeds. Is that a donut tree? What are those? They're Cheerios. So a donut tree is not going to grow, right, if I planted Cheerios on the ground. But the, I put them in the ground and see what happens, I guess. They become squirrel food probably. That's probably what would happen. So the most important thing we definitely need is the soil for this. And so seeds need the right kind of soil so that they can grow. So we, so they can have their roots and they can grow out from the ground. So the grown-ups are going to hear a, a story in a little bit called the parable of the seeds. And Jesus told parables to the people who, who had just met him and wanted to become more like Jesus. And the, a parable is a story that has kind of like a hidden message that Jesus wanted everyone to understand. So someone had asked him what they should do if they saw someone behaving that was not godlike or like a Christian or like how God and Jesus want us to act. Some people said they should throw the bad, get rid of those bad people, not be their friends. And other people said they should try and help them. So this is the parable that Jesus told them. One day, the farmer went back out to plant more seeds, but when he pulled a handful of seeds out of the bag, he discovered he had a problem. Someone had sneaked into the barn and mixed a bunch of weeds and seeds in the bag with his good seeds. So the bad seeds were in the bag with the good seeds, and it was hard to tell them apart. What do you think the farmer in the parable did? Think he got rid of everything? What do you think? Tried to plant them? What do you think? Do we have any ideas? No? What do you think, Will? Ooh, so we went through all the seeds and tried to find the good ones. Do you have an idea, Sammy? Well, that's just the story. The far there's someone put mixed all the bad seeds in with the good seeds. Oh, maybe got new seeds. So the farmer was pretty smart. So instead of worrying and spending all the time trying to pick through all those and find the bad seeds and get rid of them, he planted all the seeds. So the good seeds, the bad seeds. And when they went back to do other things that the farmer needed to do for his family. And then when everything grew, when the seeds sprouted, the good seeds grew and they were filled with grain. The bad seeds grew too, too but they didn't have any grain on them. So when it's time to go out and pick the good grain, it was easy for the farmer to find the plants that came from the bad seed and chop them all down and get rid of them. Then he picked the good grain and put it in the bins to keep. So the people had asked Jesus what they should do if they saw someone behaving in a, not, in a mean way, not how we're supposed to be acting. And that's why Jesus told them this parable. Jesus was telling them they didn't need to spend time worrying about trying to catch people doing the wrong thing. And they saw some, if they saw someone not doing the right thing, they didn't need to be mean to them or treat them like a weed and get rid of them. What they needed to do was keep growing their own faith and living their lives the way Jesus wants us to. And then as we all grow, it will be easy for God to see the differences between the plants, between the plants from the good seeds and the bad seeds. And that's when God will do what he needs to be done. So sometimes we all get worried, right, and upset when someone doesn't do the right thing. Do you get upset when that happens? Yeah, it upsets me too. So sometimes we want to do something to them because they're not being nice to us, right? But God knows that what belongs and what does not belong. So we should let God take care of it. Our job is to grow our faith, take care of each other, be nice, help others, and let God handle the rest. Can we do that? Can you be a good seed this week as you go out into the world? Yeah, I think so. All right, so can you pray with me before we go back to our seats? All right, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the parable of the seeds. Please help us to remember it and to allow it to work in our hearts. Help us to be good seeds for your work. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. You guys can go back to Kids Corner. Thanks for coming up.
from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning with the first verse. That day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down beside the lake. Large, such large crowds gathered around him that he climbed into a boat and sat down. The whole crowd was standing on the shore. He said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed, and as he scattered seed, some fell on the path, and birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants, and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among the thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked them. Other seed fell on the good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a yield of 101, in another case, a yield of 60 to 1, in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. Jesus' disciples came and said to him, Why do you use parables when you speak to the crowds? Jesus replied, Because they haven't received the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but you have. For those who... Who, who have will receive more, and they will have more than enough. But as for those who don't have, even the little that they will be, the, even the little they have will be taken away from them. This is why I speak to the crowds in parables. Although they see, they don't really see. And although they hear, they don't really hear or understand. What, is, what Isaiah prophesies has become completely true for them. You will hear to be sure, but never understand. And you will certainly see, but never recognize what you are seeing. For this people's sensed, senses have become calloused, and they've become hard of hearing, and they've shut their eyes so that they won't see with their eyes or hear with their ears or understand with their minds and change their hearts and lives that I may heal them. But happy are your eyes because they see. Happy are your ears because they hear. I assure you that many prophets and righteous people wanted to see what you see and hear what you hear, but they didn't. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of the scriptures, and we just pray that as we think about them together, that you might be at work in our hearts and our minds and our hearing and in our understanding. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want you to think about something for a moment. What's the best piece of advice that you ever received that you just were not ready to hear? Think maybe about a time when maybe your parents, your grandparents, maybe a mentor at work, maybe a mentor in the church told you something about time, about the importance of time. When we're young, we don't really think that much about time, do we? It's always about what's coming and getting excited for the next thing that we're going to do. Whereas we get a little older, suddenly time becomes more and more and more important to us. Or maybe it was about money, lessons about money that maybe you wished you would have learned in your 20s, but you just were not ready to hear in your 20s. Maybe about relationships that you didn't understand until a relationship that you had went off the rails. These are the kinds of advice that we cherish as we get a little older. But the thing about it is, we dismiss it when we hear it initially because we just aren't in a position to understand it. That wisdom becomes so much more valuable later on, mainly because we experience the truth of it for ourselves. 
not because somebody told it to us, but because that thing that somebody told to us now has been confirmed by our experience and our understanding. Usually we have to learn the lessons for ourselves. That's why even I recognize my role of standing up and teaching week by week is of limited utility in the grand scheme. Because the thing that I tell you today might not actually be relevant to you for some long period of time to come. And that's inevitable. That's something you can't get around. People in our lives often want to share their wisdom with us in order to keep us from making mistakes. But the reality is we have to make mistakes on our own because we just can't get there. And the spiritual life is no different than that. Last week, you heard a sermon from our friend Jess. I hope that you enjoyed and appreciated that sermon. I listened to it yesterday, and it was, it was wonderful. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, I hope that you will. Um, you can find it on YouTube. You can find it in the app. But in some ways, when you heard that sermon, the message was about running away from God which is basically the oldest story that there is. If you think about it from Adam and Eve to Moses to Jonah to Jesus on some level, certainly to Paul, throughout the whole of the Bible, it's all about people trying to run away from God and realizing that you can't. That's the story. We can read those stories all day. Jess talked about growing up in the church and hearing those stories. You can hear those stories all day. You can read them. But it's not until you realize that you're living them out that they become true. That's just the nature of the spiritual life. So a teacher can have all the wisdom in the world, but until we arrive at that moment, when we're ready to hear it, we won't hear it. And all that wisdom will be like the unrealized potential of a seed. In the same way that Jesus is talking about seeds today, that's how that functions in our life, those teachings that we plant and we wait. So Jesus frequently taught using stories. You know some of the famous stories, the story of the Good Samaritan, the story of the prodigal son. Maybe the, uh, you think about the parable of the sheep and the goats, about who serves and who does not serve. These, for many of us, are the stories that are more essential to our faith than perhaps anything else. They teach us about how we're supposed to live. But Jesus' approach in telling stories must have been a problem for a lot of people. And we see that even in today's story. You can imagine Jesus stands up and he talks about a guy throwing seeds wherever. And you can imagine people approaching him afterwards, his disciples, in fact, approach him afterwards and are like, what is that story about? What did that mean? Everywhere in the New Testament where this question is asked, and it shows up repeatedly, this question of why was it that Jesus taught in parables? Why was it that it seemed like he made things harder to understand than they actually needed to be? Everywhere the answer comes back to this passage from Isaiah 6, this one that's quoted today. People's senses have become callous. They've become hard of hearing. They've shut their eyes so that they won't see with their eyes or hear with their ears or understand with their minds and change their hearts and lives, that I may heal them. Now, a lot of scholars think that the early church had to turn to this lesson from Isaiah. Because everywhere in the New Testament where somebody asks the question, why did Jesus teach like this? It always comes back to Isaiah. A lot of scholars think that the reason why is because this was a major PR problem in the early church. You can imagine that when the disciples go out and they preach and they talk about Jesus and how the, the, he was the Messiah, that people would scratch their heads, stare at him and say, if he was the Messiah, 
Why didn't anybody recognize him exactly? And part of the explanation was, well, it's true. He taught in these ways that maybe weren't that clear sometimes. He liked to teach in stories. I don't know why, except Isaiah talks about it. Maybe the greatest irony of our faith is that we have taken the teachings of someone who liked to talk in parables, who liked to talk in stories, who liked to let you think for yourself about what this might mean, ponder how it lines up with your own experience, and we've taken this faith and turned it into something that's all about easy answers. I can tell you exactly how the world works. That might be the greatest irony of modern Christianity. Jesus' parables were supposed to make you think. You'd walk away maybe not understanding. And that might sit with you for an hour. It might sit with you for a day. It might sit with you for a week. It might sit with you while you were talking with your family around the dinner table. It might sit with you for a long time until the moment when you realize, now I can see what he meant. Spiritual teaching is like that. It doesn't actually take root. It doesn't actually begin to grow until we have something happen in us that lines up with our history and our experience. And just like we weren't ready for that wisdom that our elders wanted to lay on us when we were 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25, we weren't ready for it because we hadn't experienced any of those things for ourselves. It's the same way with what we learn here when we come and read about Jesus and hear the things that he taught. We should expect that the things that he has to say to us will dawn on us over time, and that's okay. That's not a problem. I mean, look at Peter. Look at the disciples. How often did they miss the point of what Jesus was saying? Even today, they are the insiders, and they're asking Jesus, you've got to explain this to me because I don't get it. I just don't understand. How often did they fail? You know, all of us want to be good soil, the kind of good soil that Jesus is talking about in the story. But the reality of our lives is that so often we are just not. We are not. Sometimes we're like that dirt on the path where the seed kind of lands on us, but then immediately bounces off. There's no place for it to take root. We don't want to hear it. Sometimes it's like the seed that fell in among the rocks. And it starts to take root. We start to think about it. We start to practice it. But when it really comes down to it, we're not quite ready to commit to it just yet. Sometimes the seed is like that which lands in the weeds. The teaching, we hear it. But we don't have the time. We don't have the bandwidth. We don't have the ability to put it into practice right now. Sometimes it's only when the conditions are exactly right. When things begin to line up, our experience, our understanding, this wisdom that we've taught, that we've, been, that we've gained from reading the Gospels, from hearing the sermons, from studying on our own. Sometimes it's not until all those things line up at the exact right moment that that seed begins to take root and begins to grow. All of us want to be good soil. But sometimes all of us have rocks in our heads. Sometimes all of us have weeds in our hearts. And that's just the reality. And so that's why today I want to ask you not to put a value judgment necessarily on the soil. Actually, that's one of the reasons why I didn't have us read the explanation that Jesus offers for the different kinds of soils. That shows up just a little bit after this passage that we read. If you want to read that, look through Matthew chapter 13. You can read it this afternoon. You can read it tonight before you go to bed. I want us to remember 
that sometimes all of us are not quite as ready to hear the word as we think that we ought to be or want to be. There are times when we're just not ready to hear, we're not ready to understand. There are times when we're just too stubborn to get it. And if we can remember that about ourselves, my hope is that we can grant grace to those around us who also do not seem to be getting it. Instead of labeling them as bad soil, instead of thinking about them as those who will never get it, what if the issue is that the time is just not quite right? There are times when we feel like we're investing a lot in planting seeds of wisdom and hope and love in people's lives around us, and they just do not seem to be responding. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere. You know, there's a thing that's maybe a little bit helpful. This parable, sometimes it's called the parable of the soils, and we can talk about the different kinds of soils, right? We did. Sometimes it's called the parable of the sower, which kind of shifts the way that you think about it. Because when you talk about it as the parable of the sower, you're thinking about this farmer who just keeps throwing seeds wherever and doesn't think too much about the end result or doesn't seem to. Doesn't seem to be overly concerned about it. Just knows that the job is to plant seeds. Right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm planting seeds. You can also think about it as the parable of the seeds themselves. Because at no point in this story is the quality of the seed ever called into question. The seed is always good. The gospel is always good. It's always hopeful. It's always tending toward wisdom. It's always tending toward love. It's always only good seed. So this week, I want you to think about a challenge in kind of two parts. The first one is, I hope that if there is someone in your life in whom you've been investing in planting seeds, Maybe your kids, your grandkids, a friend, somebody at the office, brother or sister, somebody that you've been investing in. And you've been planting seeds, and you feel like you've maybe been planting them for a long time. And they don't really seem to be going anywhere. The first part of the challenge is to think about all those times when someone gave you advice that you could not take, that you would not take until it lined up with your experience. And practice patience. So that's the first part of the challenge. The second part of the challenge is if you haven't been planting those seeds as intentionally, but also as indiscriminately, as the farmer in this story, then you might think about how it is that you can be a planter this week. Someone who is the one offering wisdom in that moment when people are wondering, what is it that we can do when they're anxious about how to move forward? Maybe you can be the voice that is calm and wise and helps people to see how God might be at work. Maybe when everybody is thinking that whatever's happening is a total disaster, maybe you can be the one who speaks a word of hope, that plants that seed of hope. Maybe for those who are struggling this week, to love themselves or to love others. 
maybe you can come alongside them and you can plant that seed of love. Because all of us sometimes have rocks in our heads, all of us sometimes have weeds in our hearts. I just want to encourage you. Be patient. Keep planting seeds. Because even though we are not always good soil, it is absolutely true that the gospel is always good seed. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for the gift of the scriptures. We thank you for your teaching, even though sometimes it is hard for us to embrace even though sometimes it seems to go over our heads. We pray that as we continue to grow in our experience, as we continue to grow in our faith, as we continue to grow in our understanding, in our relationship with you, that we might see new insights, that the things that were not clear yesterday might become clear today. And if we can believe that for ourselves, we pray that we might believe it about others too. So God, we ask that you give us patience. We ask that you give us wisdom. We ask that you encourage us to indiscriminately plant those seeds in all the places we find ourselves this week. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall All those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then but I can see it now there was Jesus in the waiting in the searching in the healing a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, there was Jesus. For this man who needs amazing kind of In the searching, in the healing, in the 
every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, there was Jesus. Well, there was Jesus. So there's a very famous passage in uh, 2 Corinthians where Paul is talking about the one who sows a small number of seeds will also reap a small crop. And those who sow a great number of seeds will yield a bountiful crop. So the investments that we make in the ministry of the church, they come back around to us in all kinds of different ways. In the children and youth who are learning uh, to follow Jesus because of what we're doing through those who are new to the church who find a community here, through longtime saints who find a place where they can be rooted and anchored and know that they have the ability to weather the storms of life because they have a place to be part of a community and know God's presence here. And so your generosity is the thing that enables us to plant these seeds. And we thank you for your gifts. We thank you for all the ways in which you serve and love and care about the church. If you'd like to make a gift today, you can drop an offering in one of the baskets. You can go online to our website at medfordumc.org give, or you can give through the app. Uh, you can also scan the QR code in the back of the uh, seat in front of you as well uh, to get to a place where you can make a gift as well. So we thank you for all the ways that you support the church. We're going to take a few minutes now. We're going to go to God in prayer. And as we do that, we invite you to share your joys. We invite you to share your concerns. If you're online with us today, we invite you to do the same. You can share uh, your joys, your concerns in the comment section. We just encourage you, if you're praying for people, to uh, use first names only, please, as you pray. Let's take a moment just in silence first as we begin. Most gracious and most generous God, we thank you for all the ways in which you have continued to walk beside us. We thank you for the seeds of the teaching that have been planted in our hearts. We know that sometimes we are not good soil, at least not for every teaching that we've received but we pray that as we continue to grow in our understanding, as we continue to grow in our experience, that you might help us to yield fruit, the fruit that lasts. We give you thanks for the gift of the seeds. We give you thanks for the gift of the growth We give you thanks for the gift of the harvest, even if it's delayed. God, we pray today that you might help us to be patient with ourselves and with others. And we pray that you might help us to be those who plant generously in all the ways. God, for the world that we live in today, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for its beauty and for its joys. And so we lift before you today our celebrations and our thanksgivings. What are some of the joys that you bring today? Amen. Amen for a vacation Bible school. For all those who have helped bring this together. We give you thanks today for our families and for our friends. We give you thanks for times when we get to recharge and be refreshed. 
God, we give you thanks for the beauty of the season and the opportunities it brings. We know that as we are gathered here that there are people that we're concerned for, there are situations that we are concerned for. We know that there are things that we are anxious about, whether they be for ourselves or for someone that we care about. What are some of the names or some of the situations that you'd like to lift before God this morning? Gail, for Tom, Amen. for Rob, God, we give you thanks that you hear us. We know that you always hear us. We pray for all those who are affected by the flooding that's happened in New England, and um, we just pray that you would be at work in those situations and in those lives, in those places where you are needed. We pray, too, for the church, that we might respond with generosity, with kindness, with love in all the places where there is human need and where people are hurting. God, we pray for this church that we, might, um, that we might model your love, even if imperfectly, that we might continue to bear witness to the love that you have for each and every one of us. God, we are grateful for all of it, and we thank you this day that you have called us to be your people. We pray today using the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now lift our voice together as we sing Everlasting God. Please stand as you're able.
Friends, we know that we are not always the good soil that we want to be, but we know that the gospel is always good seed. So as you go forth in this place, go forth to practice patience with yourself and others. Go forth to be generous in sowing seeds for the kingdom this week. Go forth, name, power, the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen.